Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving the very first IMO problem. This is going to be my first IMO problem as well, so let's get started. So we're supposed to prove that 21n plus 4 divided by 14n plus 3 is irreducible. Now what is that supposed to mean? We're going to talk about a couple things here, but first of all let's go ahead and test some values of n. In this case, of course, we're talking about n being an integer, Particularly, I'm going to be testing some positive integers here. So, for example, if n is equal to 1, what happens to our fraction? Let's go ahead and check it out. We're going to be getting something like 25 over 17. Irreducible basically means that 25 and 17 have no common factors besides 1. Okay, let's test another value. For example, n equals 2. If n is equal to 2, I'm getting 46 divided by 31. Again, these two numbers have no common factors besides 1. So, in other words, if a fraction is irreducible, we can safely say that the greatest common divisor of the numerator and the denominator is 1. Okay, now let's talk about how we can prove this. But first of all, I want to give you a property that we're going to be using to solve this problem. Okay, what is that property? And that property is used a lot in number theory, especially if you have divisibility problems like this one. That would be very helpful. So, this is how it goes. And we have some certain notation here, so just bear with me. I'm going to define that as well. So, when I write something like if d divides x. So, that vertical line basically means that d divides x. So, let me go ahead and write that down. This means d divides x. Obviously, there's a couple ways to say this. You can also say that x is a multiple of d, or you can also say x is divisible by d, which means it leaves no remainder. So, here's how it goes. If d divides x, of course x being an integer in this case, again, and d divides y, could be the same one or an, uh, another integer, then we have the following result, which is extremely powerful, I think. d divides ax plus by. So what we do is, if d divides x, we multiply x by some integer, a is an integer, b is an integer, and then we multiply y by another integer, and we add those together, and what this gives us is actually also very significant. This is called a linear combination of a and b. Now, linear algebra actually deals with linear combinations, but we're not going to get into depth here. I'm just going to tell you what it is. This is called a linear combination of x and y. Okay, so if d divides x and d divides y, then it also divides their linear combination. We could also state this rule this way. Okay, so now let's see how we can use this property in our example and see how we can prove that this fraction is irreducible. And again, proving this fraction irreducible means that the numerator and the denominator have no common divisors besides 1. Okay, so in other words, we're going to divide that, we're going to prove that the GCD of the numerator and denominator is 1. How do you go about that? Well, we're going to start by letting d equals the GCD of the numerator and the denominator, which is 20n plus 4 and 14n plus 3. Okay, suppose d equals the GCD. Now, this means that g is a common, d is a common divisor, right? So, that implies d divides 20n 21n plus 4, and d divides 14n plus 3. You get the idea? So remember, we just talked about a rule, a theorem, a rule, which says d divides x and d divides y. That implies d divides ax plus by. So we're going to be using that rule here, but how do you use that? So that property tells me basically that if I add the numerator and the denominator here, and d still divides their sum, d divides their difference, but those don't really give me good values. So what I'd like to do here is different, and this is how it goes. So I'm going to say that, okay, d, if d divides both of these, then it also divides, it also divides three times the second expression, and you'll see why I start with the second in a little bit, minus, but of course I'm allowed to use a negative integer as well, so that means I can use a minus sign, two times the first expression. Now, what is so significant about choosing those numbers 3 and negative 2 is that if you carefully, if you take a look at it carefully, from here you're going to be getting 42n 
and from here you're going to be getting negative 42n. So here the goal is to get rid of n. Make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and proceed. This is going to give me d divides 42n plus 9 minus 42n minus 8. Of course, 42n cancels out, and then this gives me d divides 9 minus 8, which is 1. Now, you got to think about it for a minute. Like, d divides 1 means 1 is a multiple of d. But 1 is only a multiple of 1. Therefore, this implies, which is, again, an important result, if anything divides 1, that needs to be 1 or negative 1. But in this case, we're kind of looking for a positive uh, integer because gcd is supposed to be positive. So this implies that d is equal to 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean for d to be equal to 1? d was the GCD of these two numbers, remember? It just means that the GCD of 21n plus 4 and 14n plus 3 is equal to 1. And this just means that, this just means that 21n plus 4 divided by 14n plus 3 is irreducible because the GCD of the numerator and the denominator is 1. Alrighty, so this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.